Robertson Net viewing audience, we'd like to welcome you to another episode of Neighborhood Connection. And today we've got some very special guests sitting in with us for this um, episode. Um, I'm sure you'll all recognize Sandy Adams. She works with the Friends Helping Friends program from the Edward County Comprehensive High School. We have our state representative, Tom McCall, and um, Rebecca Weisenbach from the Georgia Vocational Rehab Agency joining us today to talk about something very special and brand new. So we're all getting, I'm getting a, a learning lesson today and hopefully we'll inform uh, you as well to let you know this um, that's going on and it's, uh, they're, they're very helpful people, been talking with them before the show and they've got a lot of information to share with you today. And we'll be discussing um, the National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And is it October or yes, is it November? October. It, October is. Okay, so we're right in the middle of it. And this is something um, new that's been in the works. Uh, from what I understand, um, Mr. McCall, you work with our Sen Senator um, Butch Miller, right, right, to get this passed, this bill passed. Two years now in the making, in the works. So it, it's come um, full circle. So it, it's on its way and I'll let you just kind of give us a, a brief you know rundown of, of what this is about and you can go ahead um, Sandy if you thanks, would. Yes, mm -hmm. Thanks to uh, Tom and Senator Miller they drafted a bill to create an agency to help Georgians with disabilities get jobs basically in a nutshell and um, Governor Deal has been outstandingly supportive of um, helping people with disabilities and um, Tom can tell you probably more about how that came about and why it came about. Well, real quick, the genesis of the bill was that there was an agency already created, but it was under the Department of Labor, and it was uh, not getting the attention that it should have been getting. The state of Georgia was having to turn back millions of dollars to the federal government that they wasn't using because they wasn't trying to find the matching funds. and. Uh, some other state was getting the benefit of those dollars we were turning back or not getting from the federal government because we just wasn't doing what we should have been doing. So this eight, we, we came up with the bill to uh, create a standalone agency, which is the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. And uh, it's governed by, is it nine members on your board? Mm -hmm. uh, a nine member board, they're answerable to the agency director, right? And then the governor finally, and uh, I knew there was one person in the world that could make this thing work. And uh, that's why I told the governor that I wanted Sandy appointed to uh, to that board. And then as time rolled on, another one of my good friends from high school a hundred years ago, uh, named Louise Hill from Athens, um, actually she's from Jackson County, we got her appointed to the board. So her and Sandy go to board meetings together and talk about everything that they need to be doing and when you get those two hard-headed females <laughs> working on something then there's no way that this thing cannot su can not right. succeed. You so, get their mind made up and it's going to happen, right? Right. right. Make and it that's, happen. that's just kind of the general genesis of where this agency came from two years ago and how far it's gone in two years. And uh, So now we're keeping all that federal money and, and spending it in Georgia on people that deserve some help. That's right. Much better than having to return it. And I think you had given us a little stat there about how much money was lost yeah, that was that could have been used for this very thing. So Yeah, when you see 70% of Americans of people uh, who have disabilities are not working, and that's about 10 million potential taxpayers and GVRA, our new agency, can help train, pro provide the proper training so that they can get a job and, and become a taxpayer. So, Very beneficial very program. And Rebecca, you're with the Georgia Vocational Rehab Agency yes. and you work inside <coughs> the school system with the Correct. high school, with the kids. I work with the students to help prepare them for a transition from school to work. Um, providing a number of services from just job readiness to training in the community um, at one of our facilities in Warm Springs, Goodwill. It's all kind of a comprehensive program to help um, all those students get ready for employment and to be able to enter employment and maintain employment. And we focus on their abilities and their strengths. 
And do you work, do you yourself work with them directly? I do, and our team members too. We also have a rehabilitation employment specialist who does the business contacts um, in the counties and a job readiness specialist does the interviewing skills. And so it's a comprehensive um, group of people that work individually with everyone or as a group. And we individualize everyone's plan to be able to go to work because everyone's different. So everyone yeah. needs different services and different ways to go to work. So we help with exactly. that. Exactly. The great thing about what Rebecca can do, you know, she helps the students focus on what they're successful at, not right. focus on disability, which I, you know, I don't like that term, but um, celebrates what the, what the student can do so that they can be successful and have a high self-esteem and, and productive and become a taxpayer. Yeah. And, and the, the businesses like Walgreens has been phenomenal. Um, they, across the nation, have hired people with disabilities and um, there's a video clip that I watched on Fox News and it talked about how the CEO of Walgreens talked okay. about how, uh, what a difference it made in the climate of their businesses and having the people with disabilities that work, they're productive, they're loyal, you know, they're just, everybody that walks into the store kind of gravitate to them because they just, they yes. really love, you know, their enthusiasm and so and I think it's, it's really good for business. That's in fact, our, our logo <coughs> or our it is. mission statement or whatever, it, GVRA is good for business. It is. That's and I, I was the vocational counselor um, several years ago and so to, to help put students to work is really a, um, you know, a wonderful feeling to be able to do that and see them working and then you know, get a phone call from them saying that they have had their job for one or two years and it, you know, it's, it, that's what makes my job. Exactly. By doing this at the high school level gives the, the student a much greater chance of getting a job outside after they leave school. Um, we're, we've seen the, the data and if they, if they aren't linked up and receive some training and go to work before they graduate from mm -hmm. high school, typically that's the trend. It, it stays that way. So we are um, helping the kids as early as possible. It's well, thank y'all so much for doing this. I know it takes a lot of time and energy to get, you know, something like this going. And I just appreciate people like yourselves, you know, dedicated to, to doing this. And I know families with, you know, kids in the school system or that have been through the school system, I'm sure they are very much appreciative as well. So thank y'all very much for doing that. Thank you. I, um, I really appreciate Rebecca and everybody at the high school. We came together last Friday. And in celebration of this uh, proclamation, we um, planned for this coming Friday to have a career transitions seminar for the at-risk students. Mm -hmm. And it, it's Rebecca's going to actually conduct the seminar, and we have Kelly Fee Watts coming over from Athens Tech to provide that mm -hmm. information of what's available and the requirements for entrance. And that's but, this Friday? this Friday and it's just going to be during class time we'll pull the kids together and, and do that in two different sessions. And I'm going to talk about the program itself and how to access the program as well as what type of trainings that we offer um, different types and different agents different um, affiliates that we work with to be able to help them get working. Okay well that's great news and you were recruited by Mr. McCall right because of all of your work and efforts with the Friends Helping Friends. Thing, and that has been so successful and my daughter's in high school and you know she's she's helped with that before and I know there's a lot of kids that support this that want to be involved with this and um, it was founded in 2010 yes. correct and and your Katie Katie McCall was kind of um, got this off the ground and running and approached you we about had, that we had always you know tried to do as much as we could for the kids with special needs but when Katie came on the scene then everything exploded and yeah. she just she wanted to go with me to Blackwell you know during PE and after PE to play with my kids and and then she asked me again and that turned into from her and a few friends yes. going to Blackwell with me into three years later a 300 member club Oh, thanks. Thanks all you kids, high school members and that may have graduated last year that were 
helping with this. Excellent, excellent cause, and just you know, you don't know how much you mean to to those. Well, and I just want to say that you know, Katie's brother Bud, and and that's where where the connection yes. came, and that's uh, who the club is in memory of. So. Dedicated yes. to his memory. I know he was a special guy to yes. a lot of people. So, and that's very special that Katie did that. You know, just like legacy to to remember him. So, the culture good. in this area uh, with 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 friends having friends is so important that there's, there's another reason I wanted her on the. Uh, Boat rehab board yes. so she can spread it statewide. I mean, we're not the only county with a uh, kid with special needs. Exactly. And uh, this thing has worked so good, and the kids learn so much better and quicker. And, and it's better for the regular ed kids than it is the special needs kids. They get more out of it than. I was going to say, it kind of uh, works. It's a double, right. you know, thing. Right. So Both people benefit from it. That's why I'm, th I'm thinking it's headed toward making and further out than that just by her being on the rehabilitation board. And, well, uh, like Tom said, the the regular ed kids, you know, we've had numerous of them enter the education pathway uh -huh. because they're interested in becoming a special ed teacher or, or the health occupations area. There's numerous students that were, were um, in the club who are in college now studying to be occupational therapists, physical therapists, nurse, you know, um, teachers, as a result of spending yeah. time with those kids, you can't have a bad day when you spend time right. with Drew Saxon. You know, everybody I mean, loves Drew. That's the truth. So everybody knows who Drew is. And they're such an inspiration, you're right, to, to anybody they come in contact with. That's they right. just kind of, you know, if you're having a gloomy day, they kind of put things in perspective for right. you. They, they just kind of give you a little check right. and say, you know, you know, and this is. It's not bad after all. So it, you know, it's if you great. look around and, you, and and if you just pay a little bit of attention when you walk in a store that that hires uh, people with with a, some sort of a disability, whether it be mental or physical or whatever, and there's more of that coming on the scene, especially with people coming back from overseas uh, right. that may need some help, just just a little bit of help, and uh, you know, it makes you want to spend a little more time. Maybe buy a little extra yeah. something in that store, and, and I heard somewhere on the news—I don't know where it was—that the stores that 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 uh, hire special needs type people uh, do sell more. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot more, maybe, but it doesn't matter. Well, I can it's, see, I can see where that would happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, they are <laughs> magnetic. <laughs> you know, you just are right. drawn into those people, and they're always so happy and so loving and you know we can learn lessons from them <laughs> honestly and, it, and it's not that you set them aside or set them out right. it's it's just that that's that's the way it is yeah, exactly you know? that's right it is well is there anything else any more facts or information that you all want to share that maybe you know our audience or may not know about or well, and you think that you think? one more little bit of data. In sure. Between 2009 and 2012, Georgia did not provide matching funds and had to return $92 million in federal grant money. This puts it all in perspective. $92 million. The grants mm. could have provided services for roughly 28,000 more disabled Georgians. Other states reap the benefits of those surplus federal funds that we did not get. So the number of Georgians with disabilities rose to about 1.2 million between 2009 and 2012. So we hope that this is going to really make a huge difference. And that's 92 million in federal money. All we would have had to provide was a small amount of matching money to, to get that 92 million drawn down. And uh, just, you know, you, when you look around and you see half the population uh, drawing some kind of help, this helps people that want to go to work go to work, and uh, that's, that's, that's what the staggering. Whole thing's about. You yeah. know that yeah. it's a win-win situation if we can provide them the training to be as successful as possible. And it's a win for everybody, strengths, regardless of right. you know some of the disability or not. Everybody has got their strengths, and you you know we want to maximize their strengths to be able to um, help them enter employment and most importantly maintain employment. 
Well, if that's it, anything else that you would like to add, Mr. McCall? Some of the smartest okay. people I know fit into this category. You're right. I would agree. And I'm just, I'm thankful for those people like that and thankful for you guys working with them because that means a lot. And thanks to you, all of you out there too, that may have had a part in this, that couldn't be with us today, you know, past students and volunteers. I know it takes a team to get stuff like this happen, uh, make it happen. So just a big thanks to all of you. And thank you for joining us today. Thank and you for thank us. you for joining us today too. And we'll be back soon for another episode.